call this meeting to order. This is Rules and Open Government Committee meeting for March 6, 2013. Any changes to our agenda order? None. Then we'll take up the March 12th Council agenda. Any changes to talk about on page one or anything else on page one? Page two or three? Page four or five. Mr. Mayor, on item 4.1, the administration would like to request a one-week deferral. That's the uh, Samsung uh, yes. agreements. Uh, we're going to have less than a full council on the 19th. Uh, so we can defer it to the 19th, and if there's any issue, we can move it out. It's moved a couple of times, so let's just set it for the 19th. And <laughs> And, and see how it goes. Mr. Mayor, is 3.4 on the 12th or the 19th? Uh, 3.4 is the hearing on the March budget message. Well, council will take action on it on the 26th. Uh, got it. Thank I've you. I've got a request to take change that from the 19th to the 26th. So I do have a question again on that one. I missed it right, right over real quick. So the way it's written talks about discussion of the mayor's bar March budget message, but we don't normally do that. We usually just have the public hearing, right? And then we have right. a discussion the next week or whatever, the two weeks later when we're gonna hear it. Well, typically we just take testimony. That's the whole point here is just to allow the public an opportunity to take testimony. We don't, we have not yet had a discussion on that. It's really part of the discussion. It's part of the debate about the adoption of it that should be done on the 26th, I think. So, so we ought to just, change that to reflect the practice that we just we're just going to take testimony but okay city attorney is that okay yes i think the language was was in there in case the comments wanted to, any member of the council wanted to make comments about it because that would be discussion of the budget item but if you don't want any of the council to make any discussion then you wouldn't put it in there and i don't recall what the what the language was in the past at this point well, it's just a public hearing. That's the intention of this, is, is to take the testimony and try to get all the debate into the uh, meeting of the 26th. So I think we should just change the language so we, people don't think we're going to have the debate that evening. In the normal course, whenever we have a public hearing, it's always assumed that there's going to be comments coming back and forth. From right. The and, and the other thing is the message is only, only going to be out on Friday, which is you know, only 72 hours notice to have a discussion on something on on three days notice right. is you know, kind of a sunshine issue as well. Okay. So I would recommend we change the language there. It's, just, it's a hearing. Uh, item 3.5, a resolution in support of immigration reform that the council wanted to have uh, taken up. I think that should be heard last. Yep. And then let's figure out a time certain, or not a time certain, but a, a not before time so people don't have to come early. We'll come back to that. Uh, at the end of the agenda, we see what else. Not before 2.30, looks looking yeah. at the calendar. Let's see what else is on. Okay. Anything else on page uh, four or five? Not much on six or seven. I have one request for an addition. Councilor Campos' travel to Los Angeles. That's the only request for an addition. So in terms of the immigration reform resolution item, not before 2.30? Does that seem like a reasonable? Potentially 2.15, depending on the <laughs> no, discussion. On the okay. Well, how many ceremonial items do we Just have? One. Just one. So we'll make it quick. I think it should be 2.30, Mr. Mayor, because I think that 4.2 is going to probably take some discussion as well as the sign code. Or the sign code. Ah, fair point. Yeah, the, the housing uh, item will take a some discussion and the sign code is probably going to have some questions. So I'd say 2.30 probably, not before 2.30 would be yeah. reasonable. Uh, all right. Uh, Motion to approve the agenda in addition with the item of addition of Council Member Campos' travel. Second. Motion is to approve the agenda with the, uh, the changes we just discussed and the additions and the time for the hearings. I have a request to speak, I think, on this, uh, Mr. Wall. Good afternoon, sir, and it's been honorable um, council members. 
Uh, item 2.2A, ordinance number 2912, <coughs> is a uh, amending the city uh, chapter of the municipal code to expand the suspension program for the collection of a portion of construction taxes on downtown high-rise developments. I honestly think that uh, there's been too much uh, occurring of favor with these developers, and we need this money for planning, building, and code enforcement, our building inspectors. And I, I don't like this. I think citizens should have the right to uh, vote on uh, land use issues. And I think there's quite a few citizens that don't really care to see any more of these high-rise or high-density living projects in the downtown area. With reference to item 3.5, the immigration reform, uh, I think it should go forward, but it's lacking a component that I think is necessary to discuss, and that's the prosecution aspect of council members who, through their ministerial acts, order the San Jose Police Department not to uh, contact Immigration Customs Enforcement when they've picked up an illegal alien that's done a crime. Now, in U.S. Code's annotated volume 28, Shielding an illegal alien from detection is a felony. So does the ministerial act by a council uh, raise to the issue of a felony by aiding and abetting the uh, shielding from detection of an illegal alien in police custody? I say it needs to be discussed, and it's not part of the resolution. Thank you. That concludes public testimony on this item. We have a motion to approve the agenda with the changes noted on that motion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? None opposed. That's approved. We move now to the March 19th council agenda. Uh, that's a meeting we're going to have less than a full council at due to some uh, travel to Washington, D.C. Anything on page one to talk about? Page two or three. Yes, Mayor, on uh, item 1.1, this was scheduled way before I realized we had the uh, Washington travel. So I'm not sure if we're going to defer it a week or not. So I'll let you know by next Rules Committee meeting. Okay, but it won't be on the 19th agenda? It won't think? be on the 19th, so we'll probably... You don't want it on the 12th. <laughs> no. Okay. So I will let you know, but... Okay. For planning purposes, it's not going to be on here. All right. Uh, anything else on page two or three? Uh, I noticed that the, comp the ceremony item 123 is to be heard in the evening, but when you get back to the end of the agenda, I don't think there's anything left on that evening agenda. We'll have to come back and consider that. Anything else on t page two or three? Page four. I don't know if we need a, a sunshine waiver on the J.P. Morgan Chase Bank transaction matters, uh, I assume that's a 14-day waiver. When will the documents be out? The memo was released this morning. Okay, so we already it's already out. We still need a waiver? Yes. Okay. That's right, because it need to be yesterday. Yes. All right. We need a waiver on that. Then uh, anything else on page four or five? Page six is nothing. Page seven, we've got only one item on there's a recommended deferral to March 26th which means there's not much else on the evening agenda so we need to can Ms. that ceremonial yeah. item be moved Mr. Mayor um, that item can be moved for the following week that would be fine does it have to be in an evening meeting no okay so it can be in the afternoon of the following week mm -hmm. uh, that means then there's nothing on the evening agenda so we ought to consider that when you make your motion as to whether or not to cancel that. So, oh, we have one to add. Motion to approve the agenda with the Sunshine Waiver and the addition of the other commendation from Councilmember Herrera and uh, counseling the evening meeting for the 19th. Uh, okay, Second. so that uh, addition was the uh, accommodation for Pacific Coast Farmers Market, right? Yep. All right, I have one request to speak on this. Mr. Wall. Sir, ordinance number 29220. I'd like to thank uh, you and the rest of the council for exempting San Jose police officers and reserve officers engaged in secondary employment while in their police uniforms from the city business tax and providing for the exemption from payment of the business tax exemption processing fee to apply retroactively to January 1, 2009. 
this is long overdue. I think you've done an excellent job here, and I just wanted to thank you. That concludes public testimony. We have a motion to approve with some changes on that motion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? None opposed. That is approved. Upcoming study session agendas is the next topic. We have a Green Vision implementation session on March 18th. Any comments or questions on the well, we need to set that meeting as the recommendation. I guess we'll see an agenda at a later time. Any? I have one request to speak on that, Mr. Wall. I would like to make certain that part of this discussion you deal with the nitrogen deposition issue with the uh, flawed habitat uh, plan and also a discussion about when you're going to seriously take on the reformulation of the sewer service and use charge. Thank you. All right, I, I do have an outline of an agenda, but is that going to come back to us? It will, yes. Okay, so we're just talking about setting the meeting today. We'll discuss the agenda in details later. Okay. Motion? Yes. Motion to approve. Second. Motion is to approve the recommendation to set it. March 18th, 1.30 to 4.30 in the council chambers on that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None opposed. That's approved. Is there anything from the public record the committee would like to pull for discussion? I have one request to speak on the public record. Mr. Wall. Uh, yes, sir. I would like to thank San Jose Police Officer Mark Stevens, uh, badge number 3558, and uh, San Jose Police Officer Jeremy Martinez, badge number 3467, uh, for an event that happened in my neighborhood where a registered sex offender was uh, in, near my house, and uh, they took care of the problem in prompt and efficient San Jose Police procedure. Uh, they were very courteous to this uh, piece of human garbage, and uh, he's not been seen in the neighborhood since. Uh, update on the uh, in vagrant encampment, colloquially known as Camp Chuck Sam. Uh, there is no uh, change, uh, except for the fact that people have been dropping off uh, mattresses, and box springs, and pillows in two locations. Garbage is piling up, uh, specifically uh, on the north the east side of Master Metals Products uh, on Coleman. It's those Quonset huts. So I don't think there's anything going on there at all. The nighttime is very quiet. Once again, I'd like on item number H, with reference to the sewer service and use charge and reformulation, the discussion about residential flow meters to accurately uh, measure flow of sewage into the collection system. And this will be referenced with Proposition 218. This would be the most analytical way to uh, charge people for their sewage use according to the law. Outside of that, uh, there's item I. I think it's time that we start discussing a formulation for revenue sharing for city employees. Uh, if it, all this money is going to be coming into the city, there should be some type of uh, annuity calculation to uh, allow employees to, to share in the, in, in the benefits. And this is overdue. It's not talked about, really. And I think if you, a finance department creates the algorithm to siphon off uh, a certain amount of money coming in and put it in a fund for each employee, this would go a long way to uh, retain employees. Thank you. Motion to note and file. Second. You have a motion to note and file. May Mayor, uh, just Return. clarification for item D. Was that part of the motion that was made for approval of the, of the agenda for the of 19th? Of course. <laughs> just wanted to clarify for the record that it was part of the motion. I'm sorry, let me just explain that. So item D, meeting schedules, I skipped over. I didn't get too excited about the public record. Um, <laughs> that was a recommendation to move the date for approval of the March, mayor's March budget message to March 26th. And we discussed that earlier, so that was included in the motion. That was a good clarification yeah. I was trying to get. Okay. So I'm sorry for skipping that without mentioning it. Uh, the public record, we have a motion to note and file on that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unopposed. That's approved. Taking us to Boards, Commissions, and Committees category has appointments to the Deferred Compensation Advisory Committee. Motion to approve items A and B. Second. Second, second. Uh, a is the Deferred Comp Advisory Committee. B is 
representatives to the Work to Future Board of Directors, and item A includes putting it on the council agenda, consent calendar, I presume, on March 12th? That, that's the recommendation? Okay. okay. Uh, motion to approve those two items on that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None opposed. Those are approved. Work plan, we have a request to add to the Airport Commission work plan a discussion of possible action on out-of-town taxi permits for March 25th. Motion approved. Second. We have a motion to approve the change in the work plan. Just a quick question. Yes. Will that then go to the t &E committee or will we get another memo deciding where that goes as far as after they're done? I believe staff is planning for it to come directly to the council okay. from the airport commission. Okay, thanks. I'm assuming, of course, that there's a resolution that, <laughs> yes. that's, that's ready to bring to council to come to the council after that. So we have a motion to approve that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unopposed. That's approved. All right, we have a request for approved District 10 Great American Litter Pickup Event as the Motion city council. Be before we get too far in this, last year and the previous year, we had the city manager's office designate Great American Litter Pickup as a citywide event. And I thought that was continuing each year so that each council office didn't have to repeatedly put these in. And I, I didn't even think of it last week when we approved one from, I think it was one of the other districts. So I just want to check and see if that was done because that's why we didn't do our memo this year. And um, I think it's just more efficient to have one thing done for everybody. All right. It would certainly seem to be more efficient. Uh, I honestly do not recall that from prior years, so I'll be happy to look into it unless the, uh, well, that, I think that's probably the best way. So I just asked the maker of the motion to approve it with direction to see if we can just wrap all the yes. other ones up in one. Yeah, and just let council members know uh, that uh, it either is or isn't required because no reason to do 10 of these when we could do uh, one. Uh, on the motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None opposed. That's approved. Uh, next is request for Council Member Chu to approve a resolution relating to the burdens placed on the city by representatives and officials from the Socialist Republic of Vietnam uh, traveling through the city of San Jose and related actions. Uh, Mayor Reed? Yes. I just want to acknowledge uh, this might be a timely one and we might lose quorum, so just be cognizant that I'm, I'm going to limit testimony yes, to one minute because I don't want to lose a quorum. Among other, other reasons, there are a lot of people I want to speak. I want to give everybody a chance to, uh, to speak. Uh, so if you want to speak on this, please put in a card so we can keep track of it. Uh, Councilmember Chu, this is your request. You want to speak to your request? Yes. Uh, thank you, Mayor and my colleagues from the uh, Rules Committee. By the request of many of my constituents, and m many of them are here, thank you very much for showing up in the Rules Committee meeting. I would like to ask the Rules Committee at this time to support a resolution relating to the uh, burdens that could be placed upon the city of San Jose by representative and officials from the Socialist Republic of Vietnam traveling to the city of San Jose. The, resolu the resolution will mitigate potential negative demonstration, such as the 1999 anti-Ho Chi Minh protest that took place in the city of uh, Westminster, in which many San Jose Vietnamese American resides actually, uh, actually participated uh, in, in that uh, uh, demonstration demonstration. Uh, the, the, uh, the result of the protest not only causes the city of uh, Westminster to incur major expenses and resources during the 53 days of civil disturbance, but also had a long-lasting negative impact to the peace and harmony of the community. The city of San Jose is already burdened with the limited financial and physical resources. In, in taking a proactive approach, the city of San Jose can adopt a similar uh, resolution that discourage officials visit and diminish any risk. Uh, as stated in my memo, there, uh, there is a, a matter of, this is really a matter of prevention. Uh, we, are t we are talking about the safety and the well-being of our uh, uh, community, the residents as well as the business in the city of San Jose by preventing the risk of significant uh, civil uh, disturbance and uh, unrest. The city of uh, Westminster, Santa Ana, 
and uh, Garden Grove has all passed a similar resolution. Just uh, uh, yesterday, the city of Milpitas also approved uh, and adopted resolution on this matter. So, so uh, I, I like to again thank the Benjamin's American community for sharing their concerns with me, and hope that we can learn from the 1999 anti Ho Chi Minh uh, protest. And so, at this time, I respect respectfully ask the, uh, the, the the members of the rules committee to support the adoption of the resolution in order not to overburden staff. I, I also like to, uh, uh, to ask the city attorney to make necessary changes and, and prepare the resolution in the most uh, e efficient way. Again, this is a, a preventive measure and um, you know, we're trying to proactively protecting the peace and the harmony in our community. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to take the public testimony this time before we get into discussion so we can see what the, what the issue might be. <coughs> uh, please uh, come on down when I call your name and uh, to, the, to this microphone here. Uh, again, I'm, I'm going to allow one minute for public comment so we have uh, time to get this done before we lose, lose our quorum. Uh, Johnny Lee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, fellow council members, I want to thank you guys for your years of service here in San Jose and uh, for defending the Vietnamese community here. Uh, today we have a concern of the Vietnamese community. Uh, we have Vietnamese officials from Vietnam who many of these people um, know today who are still alive when the communists took over Vietnam, incarcerated many hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions, and killed many of them. Uh, they tortured them, they um, did things to them that you know we don't even want to talk about. And so now these Vietnamese officials, the very same ones who are doing this in Vietnam, are, are coming here to America. And we're asking that the Vietnamese, or the San Jose City Council not condone these officials to be here. Because these guys, they left their country, everything they own, their life, their family, so that they can get away from that. And now these guys are following us. So they want to live their life in peace. They want to be, they left everything they had, they owned, so that they can have this peace. And so we're asking for the San Jose City Council to consider uh, letting them have their freedom. Thank you. Yep, Fan. Good afternoon, Mayor and Vice Mayor and on City Council. My name is Fan Quang Yip. <coughs> I support a lot after the fall of U.S. back, Saigon government. I myself support 17 years in jail. And uh, I experienced very much on like a French wars, like a fox labor, like a continuous hunger, and so on. All kind of torture the communists have done upon myself. But now I'm having a very good and a very happy life in San Jose. And I don't want the Vietnamese communists who come here to destroy our life and to destroy our peaceful life <coughs> here. So I strongly support the resolution of not welcome the Vietnamese communists in San Jose. Thank you, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and all the council. Thank you. Martha O'Connell. I'm here as a fiscal conservative and a lover of the people and country of Vietnam. San Jose does not need to be spending public monies to maintain the public peace when this resolution could help offset potential conflict and violence. Additionally, those of us who look forward to the day when Vietnam is a free democracy urge you to discourage visits from representatives of this communist dictatorship. Human Rights Watch has just released its 19, uh, 2013 report and says that Vietnam has taken another step backwards in 2012 with oppression of those who ask for democracy. Catholic priests and Protestant ministers are being especially targeted. Send a message to the representatives of this oppressive communist government that they are not welcome in San Jose. Thank you. David Wall. I'd like, uh, Mr. Mayor, and I'm really surprised that the vice mayor didn't come up with this herself. Tell these people that uh, 
that San Jose cannot guarantee their safety or their well-being. These people come from Vietnam into our Vietnamese community. It is very foreseeable that these officials could be exterminated. And whereas that does not bother me one single bit, I just think that you should provide these uh, Vietnamese officials notice that their health, their well-being, their very lives are in jeopardy if they come to the city of San Jose. And I basically would, I would uh, warn them with the very strong words, do not come here. Thank you. Jim Nguyen. Honorable Mayor and Gong Committee member, I am Jim Nguyen president of Vietnamese American community of Northern California. We Vietnamese American <coughs> called refugee. We escaped from communist so so socialist Republic of Vietnam. We are strongly support San Jose City adopt a re resolution against any deletion of communist or related to communist traveling in our in or true city of San Jose to disrupt our community's peaceful life. Thank you. Li Tong. Ladies and gentlemen, communist Vietnam fought and defeated America in the past. Castro still condemned American imperialism against Cuba. At this very time, state-sponsored Chinese hacker attacked American corporation government agency, critical infrastructure, set up electrical power grid, gas line, water work. North Korea threatened to nullify armistice agreement following its third test of nuclear weapon. Communism is the crushing calamity of mankind. So not only we, political refugees, but also on American, special American representatives such as mayor, room committee, have responsibility to protect themselves, U.S. citizens, by supporting the adoption of this the similar resolution, a Santa Ana Garden Grove, Westminster, Milford that already did pass it. Thank you. Duonia Huang, and I'm not too sure about that name because I can't read the handwriting very well, and my Vietnamese isn't perfect. Uh, last name Huang, H-O-A-N-J, Duonia, I think. And you're gonna, you're gonna correct me because I don't think I got it right. À, chúng tôi xin thay mặt lực lượng sĩ quan Thủ Đức à, Công được Việt Nam Cộng hòa Hoàng thượng Kính chào ông Thủy trưởng và chúng tôi xin nói bằng tiếng Việt I can talk a uh, uh, Vietnamese language Your choice à, Trước mưu toàn thông tin nước Việt Nam của bọn xâm lược Trung Cộng Với chính sách hèn với giặc Trung Cộng ác với dân và cùng quyền Hà Nội Cũng như với âm mưu thống trị cả vùng Đông Nam Á Và chủ nghĩa hán tộc cực đoan của Trung Cộng Qua các hành động tranh chấp vùng hải đảo Về bản đồ lười bò chiếm trọng Biển Đông Cấp đoạt tàu bè giết hại người dân Việt Nam và bắt tiền chuộc mạng, sản xuất hàng hóa và thực phẩm độc hại xuất khẩu qua thị về Việt Nam. Yêu cầu Hội đồng thành phố San Jose ban hành nghị quyết cấm hoặc hạn chế các cuộc tham quan của các phái đoàn bảo quyền Cộng sản Trung Cộng và Việt Cộng đến San Jose. Mọi sự thăm viếng đến thành phố San Jose phải được báo trước 14 ngày cho mọi người đều biết. Chi phí an ninh phải do phái đoàn hoặc cơ quan chủ quản chịu mọi chi phí à, thanh toán, chứ không được dùng ngân sách của thành phố. Yêu cầu chỉ viên Cai Xuân Chu ghi nhớ thêm vào memorandum của mình cấm cả hai phái đoàn Trung Cộng Việt Cộng chứ không phải chỉ có cấm một mình phái đoàn Việt Cộng mà thôi đó là ý kiến của lực lượng sĩ quan Thủ Đức cảm ơn quý vị cảm ơn thị trưởng may I please just yes, briefly translate, translate. I, I, it's not perfect but uh, the intent uh, of his comments was pretty much to encourage council member Chu to also incorporate uh, restricting travel among representatives of the Chinese uh, officials from China to come to San Jose because uh, of their uh, overtake of the two islands uh, in Vietnam, which they took illegally. And so that's pretty much in, in, um, in line with the, uh, I guess, the comments that were provided by the officers of the two dip. Okay, uh, Charlie Lee, or Lai. Mayor and Vice Mayor and all Council of the Rule of Committee and uh, City Staff, 
Today I come here. I first I thank uh, Council Canton Chu about we put the resolution for the um, not permit for the common employee come to the city. But I have the question: Why we don't want the communist Vietnam come here? Because they no human right. And why don't you put the China communist in this resolution too? You remember Tiananmen Square? They kill how many children? <laughs> they, they occupy my island. They kill my fishman. Then they capture some. They bring to China. Then they have to pay the fine. They get the people back to Vietnam. I think you should put that resolution too, because communist China and communist Vietnam, communist is communist. I have the feeling that you. Discrimination. I'm, I'm sorry, your, you. your time is up. Uh, Tan No. Good afternoon, Mayor and the City Council. Today I come here, I, I want to talk about the, in Vietnam and in China, that's the same, because that all the country or the communist, no human rights, no democracy and no liberty. So, I would like to meet the committee add to your memo uh, to add to the China government uh, to the, your um, your referendum because the, I see the, the enemy of the Vietnamese community here not only the, the Viet Cong but also the China. Because they kill many people of Vietnam now. They, they sin many people of Vietnam now. They don't let Vietnam fishing well to go to the sea. So they occupy the territory, water, and the territory of the Vietnam. And so, please, city council, if you I'm accept sorry, the resolution. Your time is up. Yeah. David Mack. Mayor and uh, senior member, city council member, and um, uh, rural committee member. I come here today with the reason very simple, can be um, summarized in Buddhism. We sent to the city before. I'm uh, David Makwi, a uh, senior citizen, and also um, in um, non community um, Buddhism committee. So. The reason we come here and we submit the petition is the first one, we don't want the community to come here to disturb our love, our life, and uh, our good life. And the second is we don't want the city to pay for a reasonable fund to protect any demonstration against the community to come here. That's the second. And the fourth and uh, the third is, you know, because uh, on uh, the city, San Jose, in the last city uh, of the uh, United States, and there are crowd people of Vietnamese, American, uh, anti communist living here. So that's why. Sorry, your, your time is up. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, T. Din Lay might be approximately right. Come on down if, if your name is close to that. <laughs> I'm going to blame it on the handwriting and my, my bad Vietnamese. Mr. Mayor and Rural Committee, thank you for us to come in and hear this process resolution. We come here because we are a Vietnamese community here, and I am tall representative of the former Vietnam Armed Forces Alliance. We come here because we want to say to you the Vietnamese community want to live in harmony. However, the communist agent doesn't want it. They want this urban Vietnamese community outreach from the community. You know everyone here know about that communist authority has gravely violated human rights in Vietnam. So we request you have to give a resolution 
sanction conversation to come or visit San Jose area. Thank you. Dave Wong. Uh, Mayor, uh, Vice Mayor and uh, the whole uh, City Council and staff, uh, thank you for letting me um, be here to address my uh, opinion. Uh, I agree with everything that all the people here say, but there's a one thing I would like to distinguish, that a group of people here, we are from Vietnam, the direct victim from the Vietnamese communists. We cannot link that to the international communists, like a communist in China, and that's why we're linking to communist Korea and Cuba, Cambodia, Laos. So we are here to address only about Vietnamese communists. And also, when they accuse him of about uh, something related to China, but I believe this man is uh, in, he's Chinese, but he was a uh, uh, Taiwanese. Okay, so to keep the two um, issues separate, we're here to against the Vietnamese communists about international international communists. That is uh, for federal level. Thank you all. Thank you. I that concludes the uh, public testament and the SIA. We'll have some uh, committee discussion. Uh, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I appreciate it, but Council Member Chu, uh, obviously very concerned about the safety of the Vietnamese community, and I, I perceive that's one of the reasons why he brought this forward. But uh, I read through his memo and the resolution, and the only reference that I saw in here is a 1999 anti-Ho Chi Minh protest that happened in the city of Westminster that's 14 years ago. And I'm not really sure if there's any examples in here that actually talk about uh, protests that actually took place when officials from, from the Vietnamese government actually came here. But we have seen many, many protests and public demonstrations in regards to the uh, annexations of the two islands that were taken away from Vietnam, of uh, actually South Vietnam uh, by the Chinese government. And th that's the reason, that's the true reasons why these protests happen. And it's not just happened in San Jose, it happened in San Francisco, it happened down in Santa Ana, Garden Grove, Westminster, uh, Washington, D.C. As a matter of fact, one of the biggest uh, public demonstrations that took place was actually in Washington, D.C. in a reaction to the Chinese government taking over the two islands, uh, which are called Paracels and Spratly. And in, in 2008, Mayor Reed and I actually wrote a letter uh, to then President Bush and also uh, Secretary Rice asking the federal government to interfere uh, with these types of events that actually took place in Vietnam and China. And so I, I'm more than happy to support this, if to support Councilmember Chu's resolution, um, if this is what his intent is, and his intent is to provide public safety for the Vietnamese community and for us not to disperse any funds uh, to protect these people. The mayor and I have spoken many, many times. We do not welcome Vietnamese officials in our city. That's very clear. And so I don't, I'm not really sure <laughs> how more public we can say this, and we'll say it again. We do not welcome any Vietnamese officials in the city of San Jose. But if your intent is to protect our safety, the Vietnamese community safety, I urge you to actually write a letter that like, just like the mayor and I did, to the federal government, to the president, the current president, and tell him in to intervene in into, into the international relations. That's not our job. Our job is to protect the safety of the people here at the local level. And I also urge you to write a letter to the Chinese government and have them engage in an international dialogue as to why they took away those two islands that did not belong to them, that they took away so illegally. If you can do those two things, I think that will bring peace and harmony to the Vietnamese community. And again, I have no problem supporting this, but I think that the real issue here and the reasons why people, the Vietnamese community is so upset and their process that happened is actually a reaction to what the Chinese government did. And so I sympathize with the folks who said we need to include uh, restricting travel among Chinese officials to the city. If this memorandum should go through, I would heavily ask that you include that we restrict travel among Chinese officials in this resolution because I think that that's the appropriate way to protect peace and harmony in the Vietnamese American community. But, but in the meantime, I also want you to think about and, and consider, take a position and actually write a letter 
to the federal government and also to the Chinese <coughs> government, ask them to engage in international dialogue about why they took those two islands from Vietnam. Thank you. Can, can I respond, Mayor? Or yes, sir. I'm sorry? Go ahead. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, uh, and the, the reason I uh, draft this uh, a, a, a resolution uh, uh, is again um, because of uh, many of the constituents' concern that now we have a, a, a business area called Little Saigon with the freeway sign and with the city sign. So it's becoming a target for some of the uh, um, uh, 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 Vietnamese uh, um, this, uh, a socialist uh, republic of Vietnamese uh, 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 sympathizer to take some, some, some pushback or some reaction to the action that we have taken by installing the little Saigon sign. And I'm not trying to get into the international dispute. You know, I know there are dispute uh, internationally um, in, in m many places and on, on this and uh, on, on this globe, that's really not a, 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 a issue that I'm trying to address. I'm I'm trying to pro, uh, uh, pro, pro, protect uh, the uh, our <coughs> city coffer, not to spend an, uh, a significant amount of money to uh, uh, to to uh, in, in case there is a uproar. Uh, and also uh, not to further divide the community. Thank you. I had a couple of comments. Uh, I graduated from the Air Force Academy in 1970. I've talked about that many times uh, with the Vietnamese community. I have uh, friends and classmates who uh, served in Vietnam. A lot of them served in Vietnam. Uh, some of them were imprisoned in Vietnam uh, for years, and some of them died and never came home from Vietnam or Laos and Cambodia and places associated with the, the Vietnam War. So my, my personal feelings about the uh, go government of Vietnam and the relationship with our Vietnamese community I think are pretty well known. Uh, but as mayor, I have to um, operate under a rule of law. And my personal feelings are uh, not what dictates the relationship between the United States and the, uh, uh, the government of, of Vietnam. And uh, so, there are some, some issues here that I think are legal and some that are national. And if, if we're going to consider this, uh, we have to consider it in, in those circumstances. So I would uh, like to know, uh, you know from the city attorney what limits uh, he perceives on our ability to do certain things. Uh, and then uh, I think we, we ought to hear from the, uh, the federal government about the travel restrictions uh, that they may or may not have placed on officials from uh, Vietnam and other governments. Uh, I know that during, uh, you know, when I was a little bit younger, during the Cold War, uh, which is also part of, of what was going on around Vietnam, <coughs> but Soviet Union officials uh, were uh, certainly allowed in the United States. We had diplomatic relationships, but their movements were controlled, <coughs> and there were hmm. parts of the country they were not allowed to visit without you know, a, a specific permission from the federal government. So I'm curious as to what the restrictions might be that the federal government has placed on, on Vietnamese officials as well as Chinese officials. Uh, I, I agree with the vice mayor that if you, if you look at the demonstrations that we've seen, most of them have been around what's happened uh, uh, between, between uh, China and Vietnam. So I wonder if maybe the city attorney just talk a little bit about the legal constraints on what we can do and in terms of if somebody shows up and there's a demonstration and we have to uh, send out uh, the police or whatever there is, you know, how can we collect or what can we do? Right. Um, as has been stated earlier, um, the relations with foreign governments is primarily a federal issue. Um, the federal government will determine what countries can um, come to this country and, and what countries are prohibited. However, having said that, um, this particular council and other councils have taken positions, person, um, policy positions with regard to foreign governments. Um, you have welcomed uh, certain delegations before. You don't have to welcome any uh, delegation or you can actually take a position against a delegation. Um, the issue that I think uh, the council has to consider or the committee has to consider is this particular resolution asks that you regulate uh, visits of foreign governments. It's asked that um, an organization or a jurisdiction, and I don't know whether the jurisdiction means that the, that the foreign government actually give the city 14 days notice 
prior to their arrival um, and that the, there be a contact person or the ability for the city to recover the costs of having that foreign uh, delegation come to the city of San Jose. Uh, again, uh, the city council as a policy matter can take a position with regard to a foreign government, notwithstanding the fact that it's a federal issue. Uh, but the, the concern is going to be the regulation of the visit. Um, I understand the concern is that uh, the city shouldn't have to pay for the cost of those visits. Uh, however, if the visit comes notwithstanding our, the regulation, if it passes, uh, I assume the police still have to go out there. The police will still have to take care of the streets, notwithstanding the fact that the council has taken a position not welcoming them. Um, and so the question then becomes, how do you recover those, those costs? Uh, the city has a special events ordinance, which currently uh, requires that any organizer that is planning to have a major event in San Jose has to uh, come for a permit. That permit provides a certain amount of days for that permit to be processed and requires them to put certain types of fees. So there is some um, ability already under our special events permit to, to deal with organizers of these types of events. Uh, I, I believe it would be difficult uh, to try to uh, send a bill to a foreign government and ask them to pay for the cost, if that's one of the, the proposals. Um, there, are, there are diplomatic immunities that apply to foreign dignitaries. It doesn't mean that they're totally immune from, uh, uh, from citations. My understanding is that you can actually cite uh, foreign dignitaries. The question then becomes whether the, the court will take jurisdiction over them. Um, the federal government usually, through the State Department, will, uh, will get a lot of requests uh, for, foreign, for uh, activities that foreign governments are doing in the, in, in the country, and they try to get waivers of those immunities. Um, so having said all that, I think it is possible uh, for, the, for the council to take an action with regard to not welcoming certain governments. Uh, the concern more is the ability to regulate uh, the visits by imposing a 14-day period um, and then going after uh, the foreign government for those costs. As I said, I believe the special events ordinance would probably already cover organi organizations that are bringing in delegations through the special events ordinance, and if not, uh, that could be a, a referral to staff to look and see whether that would, uh, those uh, or, uh, ordinances would already cover uh, those particular issues. Okay, I, mm -hmm. I'm curious if staff is aware of any uh, <coughs> visits, stops, drive-bys, whatever, from commercial or trade delegations from Vietnam. I'm not aware of any from the, uh, representing the government of, of Vietnam. The only ones I'm aware of are, were uh, Chinese government uh, uh, related that, I, that I'm aware of have been to San Jose. I, I, as far as I know, you know, no one's told me that there's anything planned or anything going on, so I don't know that this is immediately time sensitive, and I think we have some opportunity to spend some time to sort this out. Uh, you know, it, it's one thing for Westminster to do something, it's something completely different for San Jose, the 10th largest city in the country, uh, to do something in terms of the impact on our, our relationships uh, with the federal government and, and foreign government. So uh, I think it, we at least need to have the courtesy of uh, asking our federal government uh, what the issues might be around that if we were to take some kind of an action, uh, you know, t consulting with the State Department. Uh, you know, I'm not a, opposed to creating an international incident. Uh, I just don't want to do it inadvertently uh, and step into something that we're not aware of, of, of issues. Uh, so I, I would certainly be cautious about making sure we connect with the, uh, the State Department on this before the council. This is before this is put in front of the council. Councilman Ruchu. Thank you, Mayor. I <coughs> thank you very much. I appreciate your position toward the Socialist Republic of Vietnam and, 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 and issue. And I just and, and also understand that there are there has been some protest. Um, you know, the, the, the Vietnamese people protested against the Chinese, and the Chinese protest against the, the Japanese and Korean protest against the the, 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 the Japanese and, and there are probably other protests in, to the Italian governments and Greeks and so on and so forth. But wh what we're talking about here is uh, 53 days of prolonged type of pro uh, protest. So it's really, really no pro co comparison to, you know, just the people gather in the afternoon and g uh, g uh, 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 have the permit to voice their concern. We're, we're li living in a free and democracy uh, uh, countries, and we, we have seen protests large and small 
uh, uh, throughout the city of San Jose, but what we're talking about is a, a, is, is, is a, 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 a 53 or even a longer, uh, uh, that, that mass of a, a protest that we're tr I'm trying to, to, uh, uh, to prevent. And there are um, things that really beyond our control, so, you know, uh, the, the, the city official or, or, or police or even the federal government's c control. But I believe by passing uh, this resolution will give us, you, know, you and I and, and, and every council member, kind of a bargaining tool, should that happen, we can minimize the, the, the damage and, mini and to, to reduce the uproar, to reduce the impact to the, the, the life of our citizens and, and our businesses. Councilmember Chu, uh, I think you're referring in your, in your draft resolution to in 1999 when the Vietnamese community was outraged by sympathizers of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam provoked the community. I, I am familiar with what happened in 1999. I certainly followed it with, with interest and I don't think there was any uh, official Vietnamese government <coughs> visit or involvement in that. It really was, you know, a person who provoked the community. Yeah, so I, I don't see that as a, a model that we have to worry about here based on a government visit. I understand that we're likely to have some protests if, if things happen. If, you know, in 1999, I don't know that we even had diplomatic relationships, uh, certainly not the kind we have now with, right. with, the, with the government of, of Vietnam. Uh, and we certainly can't and you know, shouldn't uh, tell members of the community what they can display or not display because they've got you know, free speech rights. Uh, which is, you know, we got a lot of people here who might decide to provoke a community by doing something like that. Hopefully they won't. But if it happens, uh, we as a city are going to have to respond. Like it or not, our police are, are going to get engaged and involved and we're going to spend some, you know, some resources. So I don't see there, there's any way to prevent that other than <coughs> trying to keep peace and harmony in our community. And I think that's really important uh, within our Vietnamese community. And so I, I don't know that I have to worry about what happened in 1999 happening in San Jose, but it, I don't think it has anything to do with whether or not the Vietnamese government comes to, uh, to visit or not. Uh, I have no doubt there'd be some demonstrations if the Vietnamese government came to visit in San Jose. Uh, we've seen them. Uh, even when we have uh, people that are loosely connected to the government, singers that have been here, we've seen protests around uh, visits by uh, uh, pop singers in neighboring cities as well as San Jose. So uh, there is certainly a cost and expense that goes with that, but it's also one of the things that we as a government just have to uh, accept that, that people can do things and we have to respond to them. Councilman Constant. Thanks. So I, like the Vice Mayor, I don't necessarily have a problem with the kind of overall intent, but I think this needs a lot of work. I, honestly, I think the information about 1999 actually weakens the case of the resolution rather than strengthen it given how stale that information is. But I think it also is improperly drafted having the council direct the chief of police because we don't have that authority to do that um, because of charter section 411 we don't direct department heads and particularly the chief of police. So I think a lot of those things need to get changed and um, I'm also concerned about the uh, any potential conflict with the State Department, what the federal government does, doesn't do, which I don't know what they do. And I think before we make any decision on this, we should have all of that information so that we can make an informed decision. And uh, coming up with a regulation policy or a policy of regulation that we have no way of implementing or enforcing, I think would be uh, a waste of time. As far as the protests, um, People should protest when things happen that they don't like, and uh, that's one of the rights that we have here. And if this happens, I'm sure we'll have protests, and our police department will deal with it effectively. So I just think we need a, a lot more research and attention to this before we put it to the council. Mayor, can I ask a clarifying question regarding to our resolution? Direct our staff, you know like this, in this case is, is the police chief or it could be a director of, 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 of transportation. 
can we use that kind of language to direct the, the staff that did not directly report us to us? The way the, the way the charter works is, is the city council directs the city manager to look at certain issues. The council cannot individually direct any director of any particular department. So the direction when it comes from the council is a direction to the city manager to look at certain issues and come back with certain things. Okay. The, the city council can adopt policies. They, can, they adopt budgets that allow for certain things to happen, but they cannot directly impact any of the employees subject to the, any of the appointees. Well, good to know, because a lot of times during the council meeting, we give the direct direction to the director level to perform a certain task. But it all has to go through the city manager, and the it city manager has to, to agree. The city, the city manager, manager has yeah. to agree to this all that. This one doesn't really bypass the city manager, but it would just specify is it the, the directing to the police chief. Right. Uh, if the if the council, if the committee was support, and if the council was was to consider it, uh, we would look at the resolution to try to correct it so that the intent would be carried out. That's right. Thank you. Well, I, I would suggest that before we uh, consider putting this around the council, we find out what the, the State Department has to say about this, because if we're going to step on toes, I'd like to step on them knowing that we're intending to step on uh, toes and not do it accidentally, uh, because we are the 10th largest city in the country, and what we do here does have uh, an, an impact uh, beyond what m other cities might have when, when, when they act. So I'd at least like to find out you know, what is the, the lay of the land with regard to the State Department and their view of the the treaty obligations that we have with whatever arrangement we have with the Vietnamese government. I know there's something because we have an ambassador in Vietnam, so there's some kind of a treaty. And uh, I don't want to cause uh, trouble unnecessarily. Okay. So I, I don't think it's certainly ready for this committee to consider whether or not to put it in front of the, uh, the council along with the, the points that Councilor Constance <coughs> made about the, the language of it. I think. <coughs> issue. So, uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to refer this to the city manager's office to address um, and research the issues that have been brought up here specifically, but not limited to, um, and whoever else is the appropriate person, maybe not all of it goes to the city manager's office, uh, our city attorney's office, um, finding out from the State Department on what the um, agreements or arrangements are in relationship between the U.S. and the Vietnamese government, um, addressing the regulatory issues that uh, you brought up earlier and our ability to regulate or not regulate and what the implementation hurdles would or would not be, as well as addressing all of the issues about Charter Section 411 and appropriate wording. Second. And return it here. Yeah, return it back to the Rules Committee. All right, you have a motion to refer to the city manager to do that work and bring it back to the rules uh, uh, committee. Does the motion contemplate that the questions would be asked uh, both uh, about uh, Vietnam and uh, China? Yes. Uh, further discussion on the motion, on that motion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? None opposed, that's what we'll do, refer to the city manager, city attorney for further work. Thank you. Next item, uh, that is a request that we accept the Water District's Joint Advocacy Federal Projects matter. I have a question on, and put it on the council agenda for March 12th. I'm sorry, I didn't read far enough. In order to provide uh, the Water District City support for their projects. I have a request to speak on that, Mr. Wall. Sir, this deals with uh, on page two. There's some problems with the wording. Uh, uh, this deals with the uh, San Jose Area Water Reclamation Reuse Program project description. Quote, the San Jose Area Water Reclamation and Reuse Program increases water supply reliability and protects endangered species by reducing wastewater discharges into San Francisco Bay through the recycling of wastewater, period, close quote. It has been shown that no federal species has ever been threatened. So that is a material misrepresentation. Down in the second par uh, paragraph, quote, 
The program also decreases the amount of treated effluent discharge into the San Francisco Bay, preserving and protecting the salt marsh habitat of two federally listed endangered species, period, close quote. There was never any threat to the habitat. It's been proven. And this, this language keeps showing up year after year to the federal government, in this case, wanting a $15,700,000 uh, request for services. But Mr. Mayor, the, the entire issue of South Bay water recycling and advanced water treatment is such a sticky issue because of the misuse of the sewer service and use charge. The whole Reclaim Water project was predicated on a theory that these, these species were endangered, but it has been proven that they were never threatened. And no matter amount how much effluent coming in from the plant to the bay will ever threaten their habitats, period. And now that the flows are incredibly reduced, why do we even have a reclaimed water project? So sir, you gotta change this language because you're going around as a government agency misleading the public. And if you wanna try for you know any type of other bond measures and people catch you basically lying to them, they're not gonna trust you. Thank you. That's the public comment on this item. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Motion is to approve the uh, recommendation, put it on the council agenda for action. Assume the consent calendar on the 12th would be where it would go. On that motion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? None opposed, let's approve. We have one more item of business, appeal of Public Records Act request. We have an appeal John Rabe, I'm not sure how to pronounce the last name, my best guess, regarding upholding a Division of Gaming Control records pertaining to applications for permits or licenses by Eric Swallow, Casino Matrix, and Gar Garden City. So this is a uh, referral from the city manager's office. Tom, you want to speak to it? Let's see if I know how to work this still. It's been a while. Um, we did have a request from uh, Mr. Harabi for records that upon uh, inspection turned out to be uh, exempt investigation records and there were other issues as I've noted in the, the memo that uh, working with the city attorney's office uh, decided that they should not be uh, made public and accessible. Uh, that's, I'm basically here to answer questions if I can. Anything to add from the city attorney's office? Um, the only th comments we'd like to make is that um, in response to some of the comments that were made by um, uh, the Mr. Arabi is that um, the, the city has been cooperative in trying to provide them documents that are disclosable. However, um, under the Public Records Act, um, certain licensing um, records are exempt from disclosure and my understanding is uh, the documents that were not disclosed all fun, fall under that exception. There was a comment made that um, Mr. Robert believed that the city had waived its rights to certain documents because they were attached to pleadings. Um, and in fact, um, the Public Records Act uh, requires uh, two things. First, that the uh, records that were released in order to be waived have to be released by the person who has the privilege. Um, my understanding is that the attorney for uh, one of the uh, gambling establishments were the one who actually attached that letter, not the city. So that waiver provision doesn't apply in this case because it's not the city who released the document. Um, and then also the, that particular waiver provision doesn't apply uh, to documents that are part of other legal proceedings. Um, so that waiver issue uh, is, not, um, is, not a, is not an appropriate uh, reason for denying it. Um, lastly, uh, with regard to the documents that are being requested, some of those documents that are part of the licensing are, are part of uh, financial and personal information of the applicant. Um, and uh, if, this, if the rules committee uh, or any other body um, decides to release it, um, there could be actions by the, uh, by the person whose records we're releasing um, because there are uh, protections uh, against the release of certain financial and personal information um, that are used for purposes of licensing. So just want to make sure that the, that the, uh, the committee was aware of, of that um, possible outcome to the extent that the committee d d uh, would to decide 
uh, to release certain documents that we believe were part of, 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 the, of the licensing record. In the past, when this uh, committee has considered uh, releasing information that had personal or proprietary information in it, uh, before we made the decision, we have given notice to the person that might be affected by it to give them an opportunity to come down and do whatever they need to do to speak to us or to seek a court order or something like that. So that might be one thing, but it seems to me that uh, maybe the solution here is not under the Public Records Act, but uh, there is litigation underway by uh, Casino Matrix and others against the city of San Jose. And my guess is that even though it's not a, a public record, uh, it could be discoverable in uh, informal litigation proceedings in, in those matters. So if Mr. Harabe, uh, of course, I don't know who he represents. It's not clear. If, he, if he's working with the Casino Matrix, uh, then the lawyers representing them certainly can get access to documents uh, which can be uh, properly protected with a court order uh, in terms of proprietary or personal information or anything else, all uh, however the court wants to, uh, to work it. So there is another alternative for them uh, and an alternative for us beyond uh, a Public Records Act request. But uh, we may have to discuss that. I don't know if Councilman Constant had a comment, and I do have some requests to speak. Thank you, Mayor. No, just based on the um, request, the type of request, the documents that are being requested and the information that's been provided by our staff, including the city attorney, I would make a motion to deny the appeal. Second. Okay, we have a motion. Uh, Mr. Hrabe, I don't think Mr. Hrabe is here. I don't have a card from him. We have some others that wanted to speak. We'll take that uh, testimony now. Uh, Rich De La Rosa. Rich De La Rosa representing uh, Forest Consulting and Casino Matrix and Mr. Swallow. Just very quickly, um, Mr. Rabi does not work to represent the, the casino. Uh, we don't know who he does work for, as you don't. Uh, but we do appreciate the sensitivity in which uh, the city has uh, taken on this request and would appreciate uh, the action of uh, denying. Thank you. David Wall. Um, Whenever there's a denial of a public record request, there's always someone in the community that government is doing something sinister. I, for one, know you, Mr. Mayor, and the council to be squeaky clean when it comes to open government. Our office of the city manager and through Tom Norris have been nothing but exemplary conduct in providing all public records that are required by law. Our city attorney is beyond reproach in, in any type of uh, sequestering of any information that falls within this. I think your conduct in this matter with uh, public record requests and all matters uh, regarding this type of subject is simply exemplary, sir. And so I would hopefully say as a member of the community that have requested public records in the past and will do so in the future, never at any time has there been any type of interference that I've seen that is not fully justified by law. So thank you, and I would like you to deny it. That concludes the public testimony on this. Uh, we have a motion to deny the request. On that motion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? None opposed. The request is denied, taking us to our next item, which would be open forum. Mr. Wall. First matter deals with the San Jose Police Department. We all know that police uh, staffing is marginalized by the loss of a lot of senior officers in part due to Measure B. What I want you to direct the city manager is to come up with weekly minimum staffing reports for the different police beat areas. Also, the amount of money that's left over that you want to give away as bonuses uh, to retain employees you should really rethink that and redirect the money into the police department for overtime because some of these beats from what I hear have only a few officers, maybe two or three, where they used to have three times that amount. There's a lot of problems, as you know, Mr. Mayor, that, uh, that is not talked about, and that's unfortunate. 
uh, this, these vagrant encampments, sir, these are not a municipal problem. This is a national problem. And to resolve it, you need to have either the National Guard come in or the military to round these people up and triage them out. The mentally ill need to be sequestered and treated. The criminal part of the element should be placed in stockades. The good Americans and other people that are out there that are just down on their luck should be uh, provided uh, housing by the military and provided uh, public work, picking up trash, sweeping the streets, whatever the old uh, WPA program was like. But Mr. Mayor, this thing will overwhelm you. This is not your problem and you have to declare an emergency to ask President Obama or the governor to send in the necessary military force structure to uh, start processing these people and uh, getting in them into treatment and cleaning them up and feeding them and putting them to work. Thank you, sir. That concludes the open forum, concludes our meeting. We're adjourned. Thank you.